What are some important tips for beginners? Think about things relative to the impact that they have on your path. Meaning that if you're gonna change something, right? Like getting your hips up, that's great. But don't just get your hips up and then sort of continue to think about the fact that you got your hips up or the next step in that like it goes from hips up maybe to sort of leaning forward and rotating. You've got to think about things in a way that correlates to the impact that they had on your path through the slalom course, okay? So if you get your hips up, I need you to recognize the impact that that had on your path because at the end of the day, your path, like the, the path that you're taking through the course is far more important than your body position. I should do another video on skier path because yeah, I have a lot to say about that. But yeah, that would be my tip for beginners. Make an adjustment to your body and then assess the consequences on your path. What are the basics of water skiing? Um, that's kind of the same. Zupa, if my car is at the mechanics for the weekend, can I still take it? Um, I assume that's a reference to the time we stole my own car from the mechanics. We returned it, but it was like significantly more dirty and the mechanics thought someone had stolen my car on the weekend. They called me up to tell me and I had to sort of tell them that it's all good, that was me. How can I control my nerves at a tournament? I would say your state of mind at a tournament is given far too much credit. Like generally on the day, it's the skier who is the best that's going to win. If you look at people's training scores, that's normally a fair indication of who's going to win on the day. The point of that is like just focus on your training and you'll probably go all right eventually. But once you're sort of dealing with just getting that high level relative to what your own ability is, I would say you just need to observe your thoughts. Don't try to block them out. Like obviously if you're at the start dock, one of the worst thoughts that you could probably have, short of hope I don't miss my deep water start, which doesn't really matter because most people have got that covered. Um, but you might be sort of thinking to yourself, gee, I hope I don't miss my gates. And that would suck to be thinking that obviously, because if you're thinking that, good chance you're going to go out and miss your gates. But I would sort of say that if that thought did come into my head, I wouldn't be sort of disappointed that I'd had that thought. I wouldn't sort of criticize myself for thinking that. It's not about blocking those negative um, or useless thoughts out of your head. It's just about observing that they've sort of come into your consciousness and then just letting them pass and not really caring about the fact that you've had a stray thought. Just focus it back to thinking about what actually does matter in the, you know, who's driving the boat, what sort of boat is there, what are the conditions like, all that sort of thing. There's plenty of stuff to think about. So just focus on that and let the rest pass through as just a observed thought. Um, when you get really anxious, obviously that really stuffs you up because you can be sort of too tense. So for me, when I'm too anxious, it's very much about controlling my breathing pattern. And most people aren't even aware of what their normal breathing pattern is in the sort of on a day when things are normal, you need to be aware of the way that you breathe, whether you breathe through your nose and through your diaphragm or whatever. You need to know what your normal breathing pattern is. And then on the day when you're nervous, you got to focus on that breathing pattern and just put it back to what it normally is, whatever that normal is for you. Just breathe at that pace um, in that way. And I mean, you'll, that'll have a huge impact on the level of muscle tension that you're holding in your body just by controlling your breathing pattern and then consequently your heart rate and you can sort of control the whole process that way. And then as far as your muscle tension goes, obviously you can be both too tensed up and too loose. There's a specific way that you need to feel on the start dock in order to achieve the same results each time. And that is just a feeling that you need to know. You need to have an awareness of what you should feel like. And if you're on the dock and you feel too tensed up, just sort of try and relax and move your body around and or maybe do some light stretches, but you don't want to do a whole lot of stretching before you ski. You want to do more of a warm up. But your goal is just to get your body feeling in that zone where you know, you know, it's perfect for optimum performance because that's how you normally feel. Um, and likewise, if you're feeling too loose and floppy, like do a big active warm up and tense yourself up a bit. So I, every now and again, I'll sing a song um, just to like clear your mind. Um, I'm told the part of your mind that deals with the really analytical stuff can be sort of occupied by singing a song and that'll let sort of the part of your brain that deals with movement um take over um a lot of people do this to be honest so yeah i remember one year i was like singing that song um at my moomba song was i'm gonna get you get you get you get you one way or another so i was like singing that song like coming under the swan street bridge at moomba um so yeah that's a few little tips for like how to control your nerves and your headspace 
but yeah, the main thing is just focus on your skiing. If you're a better skier, it makes it a lot easier to win the tournament. Do you watch footage of your skiing? Yeah, I watch heaps. Um, don't overanalyze it, like I said before. And you sort of look for patterns. You don't, you just sort of recognize why you fell off and then recognize why you fell off. And then eventually you might be like, oh, I've fallen off for the exact same reason 10 sets in a row. 